Go with me to the book of Luke, chapter 3. Last night we talked about the baptism in the Holy Spirit. This morning we talked about tongues, the gateway to the supernatural. You've got to get the tape from this morning. And tonight I want to speak to you about the baptism from the standpoint of the Holy Ghost and fire. The Holy Ghost and fire. Fuego. The Dios. Hallelujah. The book of Luke, chapter 3. John answered, saying unto them all, I indeed baptize you with water, but one mighty than I cometh, the latchet of whose shoes I'm not worthy to unloose. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Everybody say, Holy Ghost and with fire. Say it again. Whose fan is in his hand, he will thoroughly purge. Everybody say, purge. He will gather the wheat into his garner, but the chaff he will burn with fire, unquenchable. Now John the Baptist was a forerunner to the ministry of the Lord Jesus Christ. Closely connected, his cousin, really. For it was Mary that went to Elizabeth because of the word of the angel of the Lord unto her. And the Bible says that when Mary greeted Elizabeth and she heard, Elizabeth heard her voice, that the babe, John the Baptist, was filled with the Holy Ghost. He, got, he leapt in her womb. Listen, a baby in the womb, full of the Holy Ghost, and he did a Holy Ghost, like that. John recognized Jesus and he wasn't even born. Some preachers can't even recognize Jesus and they're alive. I mean, Mary comes along and greets Elizabeth. Elizabeth hears her voice and John goes, yeah! <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. John the Baptist. Now, let me just tell you this right now. When you study the word of God and you look at the life and ministry of John, then you have to come to the conclusion that John, ladies and gentlemen, was a Baptist. He even announced and told people, I am a Baptist. <laughs> but he also said this coming a Pentecostal after me. <laughs> He's going to baptize you with the Holy Ghost and fire. I mean, is that what the word says? That's what the word says. John said, I baptize with water. I'm a Baptist. I be a Baptist. A Baptist I be. I am my own. But this coming a Pentecostal after me is gonna baptize you with the Holy Ghost and fire. Listen, Pentecost is not a denomination. It's not a denomination. There's a lot of people call them Pentecostals. They penny nothing. Wow. 
All they have is pennies and they cost you a fortune. <laughs> Pentecost is an, is an event. It's an event that took place. Jesus told them about this Pentecost. Then we can read about in Acts chapter two. And when the day of Pentecost is fully come, I've got news for you. The day of Pentecost is fully come. Now that doesn't mean say that we don't baptize with water. People get saved. We baptize them with water. And then we baptize them in the Holy Ghost. We get them filled with the Holy Ghost. That's the order of events. Saved, baptized, and filled. Can you say amen? amen. Now, I, you see, I grew up in Pentecost, and I'd heard about this Holy Ghost and fire. You had heard about Holy Ghost and fire. But I'd heard about this Holy Ghost and fire for a long, long time. Last night when we talked about baptism, we talked about to be totally immersed. To be totally immersed. When he baptizes you into the Holy Ghost, he totally immerses you, saturates you. So that you can't tell the difference between you and him and him and you. You are in him and he is in you. Hallelujah. Glory to God. There's a lot of people that want to know, they ask me the question, why are you always talking about fire? We watch some of the videos, we watch some of the meetings. You always run around yelling fire. 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 You must just enjoy firing people. <laughs> Part of my job is I'm a Holy Ghost arsonist. I run around setting things on fire. I just like going around setting things on fire, setting things ablaze. Can you say amen? I light fires on purpose. I'm, 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 I'm fixing to light a fire here in just a few moments. You know, I, I like the prayer that the old African-American preacher prayed. He said, he said, Lord, dip me in the kerosene of thy spirit and set my heart ablaze that I may burn for thee. Well, oh, I like that one. When I heard that, I said, yay, me too, Lord. Dip me, dip me, dip me in the kerosene of thy spirit and set my heart ablaze that I may burn for you. Why do you always talk about the fire? Well, fire is important because fire purges and fire purifies and fire refines. You know, one of the biggest problems, I was looking at the headlines and they said the major fires out west again. This happens every summer because they have a lightning thunderstorm and lightning hits the ground or goes up or whichever way they say it happens and it actually goes from the ground up and they say what happens is this 
is that whole forests just start burning because instead of having a controlled fire throughout the year, just letting the fire burn, they, they won't have any fires and they just let the sediment just build up, build up, build up until it's a foot, two, three, four deep. They just let it pile up for years. When a fire comes through, it burns the whole forest down, takes the trees out. If you leave the fire, it's not going to destroy the trees. It'll burn out all the weeds, it'll burn out all the junk. In actual fact, there's some trees that when it burns the cones and then the seeds fall in the ground and the new trees come forth. The best thing for the forest is to have a fire, but they don't want a fire. It reminds me of some churches, they don't want the fire, so all the weeds grow. And that's why it's detrimental to them. You shouldn't even go have a revival there because if you do, it's gonna burn everybody, including the deacon's shorts. I mean, it's gonna come through, it's gonna clear the house. It's gonna clean the house, I'm telling you right now. Somebody said, I want revival. No, no, you don't want revival. You haven't even had a fire around the place in years. You haven't even had a fire around the place in years. You've been running them deacons haggard, throwing buckets of water on everybody. Every service throwing buckets on water, stopping the move of the Spirit of God, stopping the fire of God from burning. Somebody said, why must we have the fire of God? So that there can be a purifying work done within the body of Christ. Listen, we went to a church Back in 94, we spent six weeks there, a large church, large church. They were known in charismatic circles. And we had a six week revival there. The pastor called me up several months later. He said, no, I'm gonna believe this. I said, what? He said, I can't believe this myself. He said, but he said, uh, many couples, he said about a dozen couples over the last three months have come to me and, and they said, and he said, these are leaders in my church. They said, Pastor, do you mind performing a, 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 you know, a wedding ceremony for us? We, we'd like to get married. He said, what? You, you're married. You, you, you're my home, home group leaders. You, you're in leadership position. He said, yeah, I know. I know we've been with you for about six years, but we never did get married. We've just kind of been checking up here and nobody really knew it, knew it you know. And he said, why? Why now? Why do you come now? Why do you come now and, and want me to do this? They said, well, before the revival, we didn't feel bad about it. We felt everything was fine. But now with the revival, we just felt we couldn't, we got into bed at night and just felt, ugh. We felt, we felt something's wrong some way. Some, see, when the fire of God doesn't fall, then there's no conviction and there can be no cleansing, there can be no purging. Come on now, say amen. And then people start doing their own thing, start to justify everything they do, and, 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 and they head so far off the track till eventually anything's acceptable. Remember this, always remember this, a, fl a fly cannot sit on a hot plate. You'll never see a fly land on a hot plate. If he does, it'll be the last time he lands anyway. Because <laughs> he'll land, he goes, <laughs> One cooked fly. And when you are so hot, when you are on fire, then no flies are gonna land on you. Come on now, say amen. And by flies, I'm not talking about these things flying around here. Yeah, I'm talking about them demons, them devils of hell. Can you say amen? amen. Hallelujah. 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 The fire of God purifies and, and when it pur purifies, then all the, all, all the rubbish comes to the top. That's why I've had people say, well, you came to my church. We used to have a nice church till you came. No, you just thought it was nice. When the fire starts burning, then the rats and the cockroaches start running. Come on now, say amen. I'll tell you right now, there's nothing wrong with you that a little bit more of the fire of God wouldn't cure. Come on now, say amen, somebody.
Now you can either have the fire now by hungering for it, by desiring it, God, I want your fire. I want your fire to come and burn in me. I want you to change me. I want you to do whatever you want to do in me. Whatever's not of you, I want it to go. Every attitude that's not of you, I want it gone. Anything that's not in line with your word, I want it gone. Let the fire burn in me. I don't want it in my life. You either have the fire now or you're gonna have the fire later at the judgment seat of Christ when you stand there and all your life's work is laid on the altar and it's burnt and it's just wood, hay and stubble and you look and you say, I can't believe it. Everything I lived for, everything I did is gone. And you have nothing to take with you into eternity. How sad will that be? Let me ask a question, which would you rather have? The fire now or the fire later? Well, if you, if you don't have the fire now, you might have the fire later, but it might be a different fire. It's called hell fire. And from that fire, there'll be no end. Can you say amen? So I don't know about you, I want the fire of God to fall on me. Now, the fire of God is not going to kill you. I mean, the only time the fire of God will kill you is if you don't want to change, you're rebellious and you want to serve the devil and you hang around and you're going to get fried. I'm telling you right now. But if you're hungry and thirsty for God, willing to change, want to change, desirous to change, and, 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 and whatever God wants to do, fire God's not going to kill you. It's going to transform you. It's going to change you. And you're going to be changed from glory unto glory. And as the impurities rise to the top, you're going to be able to get rid of them. Can you say amen? amen. Hallelujah. 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 I've watched people that come to me and say, Brother Rodney, I don't understand it. I, I, the Lord touched me in revival. The fire of God fell on me. And then I saw some attitudes of things I didn't even like. I wondered where they came from. And then I realized the Lord was just getting rid of them. And then I thought, everything's fine and hunky-dory. And I go on. And, and about six months later, fire of God fell on me again. Oop, where did that come from? Someone said, I just wish God would do it all at once. He can't. You couldn't handle it. You couldn't handle it. When the fire of God comes, there's going to come a change. There's going to come a transformation in your life. And over the years, from April of 89, since we've been in these revival meetings, conducting these revival meetings in 50 countries of the world, I've watched people come into revival, come into the fire of God, and then back off. And I used to take it personally. It, it, it affected me. I thought, well, what did I do to them? What did, they wouldn't even return my phone calls. What did I? What did I do to them? Why? I must have said something. I must have done something to them. And then they'll call me up and say, oh, leave a message for me. We just love you so much. You're special to us, and thank you for impact you had in our life and, and I thought they didn't even talk to me on the phone but they'll leave message but and you know what the Lord said to me you know what the Lord said to me he said they, they don't it's not you they have a problem with it's just that when they hear your voice you remind them of where they're supposed to be and so it's better off that they separate themselves from you don't take it personally don't take it personally because they've chosen to go another way because the fire of God was starting to touch areas that they just didn't want to relinquish and didn't want to change and so if you take it personally you, 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 you touch an area where you shouldn't even go. It has nothing absolutely to do with you because you can allow the fire of God to come and change you to a point and then you'll stay at that place. The moment you are not hungry and thirsty anymore, that's as far as God will take you and he'll leave you there and the Lord never pressurizes you. But I don't know about you, I'm not a settler. I'm a pioneer. Can you say Amen. I want to blaze the trail. 
Can you say amen? amen. Hallelujah. I want to cut a path through the devil's territory. Blessed be God forevermore. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. Glory to God. Now, the Bible says in the book of Acts chapter 2, when the day of Pentecost has fully come, they all with one accord in one place. Suddenly there came a sound from heaven like a mighty rushing wind filled all the house where they were sitting and peered under them, cloven tongues like as a fire. And what does it say? Cloven tongues like as a fire. It sat upon each of them and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Well, now when you go down and look at Peter and see the transformation in Peter's life, then you realize that this is the same one, the same man that was timid and denied the Lord Jesus on three occasions, but suddenly now he's not timid anymore. He's bold. He's standing up. Ye men of Judea and all ye that dwell in Jerusalem, be this known unto you and hearken to my words. These are not drunken as you suppose, seeing it's but the third hour of the day. But this is that which is spoken by the prophet Joel, that it should come to pass in the last day, saith God, I pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and daughters shall prophesy. Somebody said, what happened to him? I'll tell you what happened to him. Fire got in him. Now, I know that there's some people in the body of Christ, they believe that once you get the fire, you just have it and it automatically stays with you. But that's not true. It's not scriptural. The fact of the matter is this. You can have the fire today and lose it. That's a fact, Jack. You can have the fire today and you can lose it. Because a fire is something that you have to keep burning. The thing I love to do when I get to go into the African bush is to build a big fire out in the bush. At night, you sit in there and you've got this big fire and you can hear the hyenas in the background and lion roaring. You've got this big fire. You know you're safe because they're not going to come near their fire. You sit there, you know, 11 o'clock at night, around the campfire, drink a cup of coffee and the sounds of the African bush at night with a hippo right in the river. <laughs> Hallelujah. It's just an amazing, amazing. It's just, there's nothing like it. But no matter how you build that fire, no matter how powerful that fire is, a blaze, Sometimes you have to move away, it's so hot. As everyone retires and goes to bed for the night and goes to sleep, if you wake up at three, four in the morning and you come out, that big fire, that big fire is now brought to nothing. You can go near it, you can feel warmth still coming from it, but it's not fire like it was. So you take a piece of wood and you begin to scrape away the ashes. And you start pulling together red hot coals. And then you take fresh wood. Fresh, everybody say fresh wood. And you place it on the fire. And within a matter of minutes, the fire is back to life, just like it was the night before. Now you might say it's the same fire. It's actually not, it's a new fire, it's a fresh fire. It's not an old fire. It's not an old fire. It's a fresh fire. Fresh! Glory to God. Fresh. Fresh fire. 
fresh. You in charge of your own fireplace. You are in charge of your own fireplace. I am a fireplace inspector. And bless God, if I come and find some wood that's wet, if I come and find some fire that's been put out, I'm gonna throw some gasoline on you. you you're gonna, <laughs> you, 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 you're gonna burn whether you want to or not. Some of you are gonna get on fire tonight because you came here hungry, you came here thirsty, and, and, and you and you fixing to get it. But others of you, you, you sitting in the wrong seat. I'm just telling you right now. There's an angel standing right behind you right now with a with the kerosene of the Spirit of God just pouring on your head, and in just a few moments, this place is going up and fire. Now, I want all of those of you that God is using you in the traveling ministry quickly to stand. Quickly! How many would say with the uplifted hands that when the fire of God touched you, that your whole ministry was transformed and your whole ministry went to another level. Come on, wave your hand at me. As opposed to when you were just a wet blanket. Now you might say, now some people weren't wet blankets. I mean, God just called them and they got the fire and they've been in it. But they've been, there were some wet blankets. Brother Richard tells a story. He said, you know, he used to have a miracle ministry with no miracles. Is that true? <laughs> All right, you may be seated. How many of you in this room tonight, you are soul winners, you win souls one-on-one. -on -one. Stand, 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 stand. You win souls one-on-one, -on -one. stand. How many will, will say with the uplifted hand, Brother Rodney, before the fire got on me, I just never used to really could really witness and do what I needed to do. But now that the fire got on me, I just find it kind of easy. Just wave your hand at me. Just wave your hand at me. Just wave your hand at me. All right, you may be seated. So the fire is a very important ingredient in the life of the believer. You know, I use a you know, humorous story that when we see people come forward, they fall in the power and, and they lie out on the f floor and then God touches them and then they flop over. God does the other side because he wants to do both sides because when you get to heaven, he wants to say, well done, you know, not medium rare, you know, not medium rare, thou good and faithful servant, but well done. I was really so blessed when I heard of our friends in Papua New Guinea because they've been so touched by revival and they love the move of God. And, but they have a song because they use fire to cook all the food. You know, obviously they don't have a stove or electricity like we do. They use fire. They're still using fire to cook food, you know. Amen. Yeah. And, and, and uh, they have a song. They sing in church. Cook them, Holy Ghost, cook them. Oh, I like that. I like them. There's some people I'd love to get cooked. I, my God. Cook them. Cook them, Holy Ghost. Cook them. Cook them. Cook them. Cook. Cook him. Cook them. Some of you need to get cooked. I said some of you need to get cooked. You, 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 sushi. <laughs> All you're good for is a devil's hors d'oeuvre. You make a devil a light snack before lunch. I'm telling you right now.
Now, this fire will not hurt you. This fire will purge you. The fire will get out everything that's not of God. And the fire will purify you and make you more and more and more and more and more and more like Jesus. And you'll be changed from glory and the 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 glory. The same fire that purges you, that purifies you, is the same fire that will protect you. Because if people want to get close to you, if they want to get their hands on you, they're going to have to get in the fire. Oh, hallelujah. 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 When you are full of the fire of God, there's no devil in hell that can touch you. When you're full of the fire of God, no one can get to you. He said, I'll be about you as a wall of fire. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's why you've got to live in the fire. Let me ask you a question. If you live in the fire, then why are you stinking the smoke? People smell the smoke, they, they're hanging outside the fire. Get right in the middle of it. Get right in the middle. Get right in the middle. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Now, if you don't want to be on fire, then you're going to have to go find a place where you can lukewarm. Holy Spirit starts dealing with too many things in life. I don't want to go there. Well, I mean, them, 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 them meetings are too long. Oh. If you ever take a roast leg of lamb and you put it in the oven for 20 minutes, it's not going to be nice. How long do you put a leg of lamb in there, baby? A leg of lamb. How many hours does it go in? It does a big leg of lamb, the biggest lamb. Huh? Jesus. Depends on how big the leg is. I said, the big lamb, a big leg. How long, Duffy? Two to two and a half hours. I mean, you cook it right through to the bone. I'm not talking about blood running when you cut it. Three hours. All I want to tell you, there's nothing, there's nothing like roast leg of lamb when it's been roasted and, and it's cooked properly. I don't like raw meat. I hate trying to put your fork into the meat and the thing goes <laughs> And I think God doesn't like Christians that are They're uncooked. They roar. They, they, they. He said, he said, I don't want you lukewarm. You either be hot or you be cold. Stay in the freezer. Stay in the freezer. Stay in the freezer. But don't you be this lukewarm stuff. Don't you be this lukewarm stuff. prophet of old said it's just like fire shut up in my bones 
what's shut up in your bones tonight? I know you have bones. There's not one person in this place without a bone. What's in your bones tonight? The embalming fluid of religion and tradition? Has rigor mortis set in? Or the embalming fluid of sin. But both the same, really, religion and tradition. Some people used to snort cocaine, now they snort religion. <laughs> Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee, blessed art thou amongst thee. Yes, amen. Well, religion comes in all shapes and sizes. <laughs> Praise God, amen. <laughs> Hallelujah, amen. <laughs> I mean, Pentecostal tradition is just as bad as Methodist tradition. Just as bad as Catholic tradition, just as bad as Baptist tradition. Have you ever heard of Pentecost at the drive through Praise God, give me two cheeseburgers and I'll take some of them golden fries, amen. Praise God, I've been in the way for 40 years. Yeah, yeah, you have. Boy, you blocked it up too. That's why revival is so needed, to remove all the blockages. Get rid of the spiritual constipation. <laughs> Brother Rodney, why, why do you why do you use the term spiritual constipation? Because you get to eat spiritual food, you get to drink spiritual drink, 
And if you eat the wrong stuff and drink the wrong stuff, you're going to get spiritually blocked up. That's why people that are spiritually constipated, they, 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 they have no go in them. They have, they, they have no life in them. They have no joy. They have no joy. They have no joy. If you look at a little child and, and the child is constipated, it's always running around crying and whining and uh, uh, miserable. It doesn't go play. You put the toys out there. Uh, uh. Then you have to give it a suppository. Another word is an enema. And, and, then, and, and then everything starts working again and then the child's happy. Oh, and it's playing and happy again. Well, I travel around and I've seen so many constipated people. I, I've been to constipated conferences. I've, I've seen constipated preachers. And there's nothing like the release of revival to set the captives free. And I always know when they get it. I always know. There's a telltale sign. Telltale sign. When they get it. Because I'll be, I'll be preaching. I'll be, I'll be ministering. And, and they'll be sitting. Look at me. Just straight face. Just like this. And, and in the middle of the message. Suddenly. And I know it's a 10 foot angel slipped up behind him with a rubber glove. It's time to get set free. I said it's time to get set free. Now don't move because I start talking about people start running. People might, you might have the same symptom. Be careful, stick around. I've had people run out as I share on that. Stay for another 10 minutes, then leave. Oh, Brother Ronnie, I can't believe you shared that publicly. I, I just can't believe. It. Well, at least you could relate to what I'm talking about. And I know that nobody will leave here saying, I wonder what he was talking about. <laughs> How do I spell relief? <laughs> R-E-V-I-V-A-L. Because when you come in from the world, God sets you free from sin. But you get around religious people, get around the church world, and, and five, 10, 15 years go by, and then, then you, you, you don't have what you had when you first got saved. And, and, and now you've got religion, you've got tradition, and you're all blocked up. It takes revival to come and just pew, set you free. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So I, I watch it. I watch it every single service. It, it's, it's. Yeah. it's a dirty job, but somebody has to do it. Hallelujah. 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 Just relax. Trust me, I'm a doctor. It's gonna be okay. Think about angel, you follow you home.
I tell you, revival is not the easiest thing to have. You, you can have religious meetings any day of the week. But revival, you really have to lock in for a revival. You really got to lock in for a move of God. Sometimes it's like trying to give a bull an enema on the run. <laughs> Feeling uncomfortable yet? <laughs> Don't you dare move. That wasn't even in my message. Uh, uh, come back. Don't, don't go, please. Come back. I'll change. Please don't leave. I'm sorry for bringing that up. Have some more popcorn. Now I know, I know that I pushed the envelope. We, we, we took the service inverted, we were hanging upside down. I did on purpose. I, I know it's all designed especially. I know exactly what I'm doing. We, we didn't just have it upside down. I had the, we had the prop off and then we had the, the plane in a spin. If you don't know what that is, well, I'm sorry you weren't around Sunday. I, last week I, I went flying with a pastor in a two-seater stunt plane. He took me up, strapped a parachute on my back and stuck me in the front of the, 
of the cockpit, he flew behind and I'm all by myself in this glass canopy and he hung me upside down at 8,000 feet and then went into a dive and spiraled the plane and cut the engines and did the loop and only God knows what else he did. But I thought I'd do this all the time in the meetings. <laughs> the jet fighter pilot. So that night when I went back to the service, I, I, was, I was heading in the direction. I said, now, Pastor, just hang on. I'm going to invert the service right now. <laughs> We're going upside down. And that's what we did. We did a few loops, went upside down there. I'll give you a while to settle your stomach. <laughs> Put it this way. It was not your regular Delta flight where the stewardess was handing out peanuts. I'll just tell you that right now. Look at 2 Timothy chapter 1. Brother Rodney, if you, if you just be a little different. It's taken a long time for the Lord to get me this way. First, uh, Second Timothy chapter one and verse five. Now, I want to show you something here that's of utmost importance. For all those that think you just get the fire once and then you're fine. It's not true. According to the word of God, that's not true. It sounds fine to say you get the fire once. Everybody says, Amen. Well, how come? The fire died down then. It is, it is possible to have the fire all the time. But just because you have the fire don't mean to say you're going to keep it. He says here, verse 5, I'm calling up memories of your sincere and unqualified faith. The leaning of your entire personality on God in Christ, in absolute trust and confidence in his power, wisdom and goodness, a faith that first lived permanently in the heart of your grandmother Lois and your mother Eunice, and now I'm fully persuaded dwells in you also. That's why I would remind you to stir up. The boy says stir up. Why would you stir up? Because it must have been stirred down. Or settled down, stir up. Rekindle the embers off. Fan the flame off and keep burning the gracious inner, the gracious gift of God, the inner fire that is in you by the means of laying on my hands with those elders at your ordination. For God did not give us a spirit of timidity, of cowardice, of craving and cringing and falling fear, but has given us a spirit of power and of love and of a calm and well-balanced mind and, and discipline and self-control. Do not blush and be ashamed. Huh. How many Christians do you know that were on fire and now they blush and they're ashamed? Why? No fire. Something put the fire out. Something put the fire out. It could be another preacher that got a hold of them and used the extinguisher of doubt and, and, and religion. It could be the people you're hanging around. I've watched people come and they're on fire in church and then they start hanging around a couple of people and you watch, their fire's gone. The fire is gone. So don't tell me just because you have the fire today, you'll have it tomorrow. Don't tell me because you have the fire today, you'll have it next week, next month, next year. It is quite possible that those who have the fire today, five years from today, will not have the fire. That's why the church is in constant need of revival, always need a revival. 
for these people to say revival's over, they didn't even know what they're talking about. Smoking some bad weed. Revival's not over. It's always available, but it's right in, in the fire. And, and you're talking to a minister. I'm not interested in having a nice ministry. A nice ministry is not going to impact America. A nice, normal ministry that swallowed the book, How to Win Friends and Influence People, is not going to have a revival in America. people full of the fire. I watch a lot of preachers that travel internationally, they have a fire when they go overseas, but when they come back here, they're like a wet blanket, man. Like a wet blanket. Because they, they love to go over there and, and do stuff, but when they come back here, they just compromise and take it easy and whatever. Well, we have great miracles overseas, but what about here? Well, we have a great move of God over there. What, what about here? I'm overseas. I'm overseas. This is my foreign field. I'm having the move of God here in America. We we having the move of God in America. We having the move of God in America. Come on, don't give me that rubbish. That just means you want to burn somewhere else and not burn here. It's time for everybody to start burning at home. Are you listening to me? Well, I, I tell you, I feel the fire of the Holy Ghost in this place tonight. Some things are about to get fried here. You can't take the line of least resistance. You can't take the easy way. We're not here to take the easy way. Hallelujah. Boy, if you can't take the heat, get out the kitchen. We're not looking for some yellow bellied, chicken livered, Mickey Mouse believer. Have witnessing beads will travel. following the great suggestion. We're looking for people full of the fire, full of the Holy Ghost, following the great commission. Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. If they look like a creature, preach it to them. Somebody said, I don't know who I'm preaching to, but it looks like a creature of some sorts. Ah! Put your hand on them, cast the devil out of them, get them set free. Get them full of the Holy Ghost. I don't care if it's somebody down in the Amazon jungle or somebody in the, in the inner city jungle. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Now, He said, stir it up. Stir it up. Stir it up. Without fire, you're not going anywhere. Your motor car can't go without it. That's what the engine is. The engine's got the fire. That's where the fire is in, inside the engine. There's no space shuttle. It does not leave Cape Canaveral without fire in it. You don't turn on CNN and they say, amazing thing happened this afternoon. Two shuttles left on their own accord. Didn't even have a countdown. No fire was seen coming out of its tail.
Listen, when Samson took 300 foxes and set fire to the tails, the, fo the foxes ran and moved because of an urgency. Huh. I, I, I just got a feeling people of the body of Christ need to get a fire in their tail, can you say amen? If a shuttle cannot leave the Earth's atmosphere without fire, then you won't go anywhere without fire. And you're going to have to be responsible for making sure that that fire is burning and making sure that there's nothing that's going to come put that fire out. I'll just be honest with you, listen carefully. There's some people I've had to walk away from. And I'm, I'm, not, I'm not talking about mafiosa family. I'm talking about preachers. I've had to separate myself because if I had to hang with them, it's gonna affect the fire of God in my life and in my ministry. Oh, there's a lot of sinners I meet and hang out with. They don't affect the fire at all because I'm affecting them. They don't affect me. I'm affecting them. But there's some preachers I, I have to say, you know, let's just, uh, you go to your church, I'll go to mine. There's some of your friends you're going to have to say, ciao. Oh, come on. Brother Rodney, you can't mean that. Yeah, I, I, I'm telling you right now, because every time you go back hanging around them, you look like a wet blanket.
Sounds like a three alarm fire to me. Someone said, what's that sound? Oh, don't worry, with every fire there's a siren. Come on, somebody say amen. Fire to live right, fire to walk right, fire to pray right, fire to preach right, fire to teach right, fire to go right. Fire to fly right, upside down, glory to God. Fire. Holy Ghost and fire, Holy Ghost and fire. Purging fire, purifying fire. Protecting fire. It's the fire God will come and burn the cancer right out of your body. It's the fire God that will come and burn every trace of arthritis out of your body. It's the fire God that will come and burn every trace of disease off of you.
You are not wasting your time sitting in this meeting tonight. I'm telling you right now, the fire of God is falling, falling on the individuals, changing, transforming, purifying, doing a work, doing a work. Because of the task ahead, because of the task ahead, he wants to do a work in your heart, not your head. So that you'll not be emotionally manipulated, but you'll be spirit led. Just like the children of Israel followed the fire by night, the cloud by day, you follow that fire. And the fire of God will lead you. The fire of God will protect you. The fire of God will make a way for you. The fire of God will go before you. The fire of God will go behind you. The fire of God will go around you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Mm-mm. Bradanga la cifra dolce zebra dele brindele vocasaya. Vocasa, 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 bon desi. Brandini bossa, babaka tasa. See, modern, modern America, modern America, people, they want to hear about how I can get a nice house, get a nice car, get a nice job, and live the American dream. Many of them, I'm not even so much as talking to you here tonight as those watching by way of television, but many of them are, are, are more consumed with themselves than they are consumed with the, with the nations and souls and the harvest. There are ministries right now that are in the 80s and 90s that are dying off. And they are dying breed of preachers. Preachers that were born in the fire. Rather than those that are born in intellectualism and born in tradition and born in religion and can preach a great sermon without even the Holy Ghost. And no one would know the difference because they have nothing to measure it by. But once you've been in the fire, once you've been in the fire, then everything else is just not going to cut it. I believe God's raising up a whole generation of people that are coming forth, born in the fire of God. There's a new breed arising. Rebaba Bakia Tasaka Tanamba Katia. Merbeba Babyanda Rebokusunda the Bakasandi is Sufra Nestea. Rababakia Sta Papa Baganda the Mankatia Sta Kadono Dombombo. Rebaba Babakia Sta Pakanda. Kabanda the Bakasa Patia Sapokotondo. 
the fire of God, the fire of God, the fire of God. He makes his ministers flames of fire. He makes his ministers flames of fire. Pabambara Badista Prabhupta. Let your fire fall. Let your fire fall. Let your fire fall on me. Let your fire fall. Let your fire. Let your fire fall. Let your fire fall. Let your fire fall. Here I firmly call. Here I firmly call. Come touch us. Come touch us. Let your fire fall. Let your fire fall. Let your fire Let your fire fall. Let your fire fall. Let your fire fall. Here I'm firm and cold. Here I'm firm and Come touch us. Touch us one and all. Let your fire fall on me. Let your fire fall. Let your fire fall. Let your fire fall. Let your fire fall. Let your fire fall on me. Here I firm and cool. Let your fire fall. 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 Membra baba kasa baba bikia tasa bia to. Bia to, bia to. Bia to, bia to, bia to. 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 Here I'm firm and call. Here I'm firm and call. Come touch us. Come touch us one and all. Let your fire fall. Men and women full of the fire of God sent forth from heaven, sent into nations where darkness and sin doth abound. They'll come like missiles sent on a mission. And in one moment, an explosion, and they'll wreak havoc 
on the kingdom of darkness as the power of sin and chains will be broken. For even concerning the joy of the Lord that has been in manifestations over the years, many did not understand it, but did not realize that as the body of Christ, full of the Holy Ghost, yielded to that joy, the principalities and powers were brought to naught in those whole regions. And the power of the enemy was broken. It takes men and women full of the fire, yielding to the Spirit of God to shake a city, to shake a town, to shake a village, to shake a nation. And I hear the Lord saying, some of you, you've seen some things and they've gone by, but if you yield to the Holy Ghost in even a greater way, the best is yet to come. And that which is coming will overshadow everything that you've seen up to this point. And in actual fact, it'll so overshadow everything that you've seen up to this point that there'll be times that you'll wonder what you were doing in the past. For you've seen limited. But you're about to see some unlimited things begin to happen. Because there's coming a flood, a deluge of the glory of God. The likes of that which this world has never seen before. From the day of Pentecost until this hour. For he has saved the best until last. He has saved the best until last. And your eyes shall see and your ears shall hear. And you will behold the wonders of heaven and the glory of the Lord. Get ready. Get ready. Get ready. We stand on the threshold even now. We stand on the brink even now. It's even now. It's even at the door. It's now. It's now. It's now. It's even now. At the door. At the door. Whole nations will be shaken. Whole nations. Whole nations. There's individuals here. There's, there's individuals here. Couples. Ministries represented here. That whole nations will be shaken. Whole nations. Whole nations. For God will use you. You'll not go in timidity. You'll not go cowardly. But you go in great boldness. And great signs and wonders shall be made manifest. And the harvest shall come in. The fire of God will be so strong upon you that you, you'll be proclaiming the word of God and, and you'll think, my, who is that preaching? And you'll find out it's yourself. Hallelujah. Glory to God. 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 Yes. Yes, 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 yes. It's not about your education. It's not about your social standing. It's about the fire. The Spirit of God's looking for a few good men. The Spirit of God's looking for a few good women that will heal themselves to the fire of God. It's time. It's time. It's time. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God, the fire of God will put such a boldness on you. A boldness on you. You'd charge hell with a dry water pistol. Glory to God. 
Mabrababakasa. Oh, Papa Bababakasa. I tell you, the fire of God's falling all over this room. Just lift your hands right in your seats right now. The fire of God's falling right all over this room right now. The fire of God's falling all over this room right now. Glory, 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 glory. Glory, 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 glory. Sambora viste, sambora viste, sambara basta. Sambara baba catista for the don't go more than a becetesta. Mendreba baba kia sta, papa bacasta, baba bacanda, baba bucuto sondo. Oh, yes, 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 yes. The fire of God. The fire of God. The fire of God. The fire of God. Yes, 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 yes. yes. Fire of God. Fire of God. The fire of God. Fire of God. The fire of God. I want everybody in this section right here to stand. Stand, everybody in this section, stand right now. Lift your hands, join hands, lift your hands, join hands. Lift those hands high to heaven. section stand join hands lift them up high to heaven
Five God shall rest heavily upon you. The fire of God shall surround you. The enemy shall not touch you. The enemy shall not touch you. For I shall go before you and go behind you and make the crooked path straight and make a way where there is no way. And that which is impossible with man is possible with God. For the hand of the Lord is upon you. And I shall raise you up for my glory, saith the Lord. And the fire shall burn even stronger and stronger. And with a great boldness you shall proclaim. And the, may, the way shall be made plain. Father, we thank you for it. Strength, strength, strength. For a nation, strength for a nation. Strength for a nation. We ask. for South Africa. Give us South Africa. Give us South Africa. waiting for is just people for the fire of God to get there. There's one thing I've known over the years. That if we get there and we proclaim fire of God's going to fall. I don't care how it looks in the first meeting by the end of the week. It, it looks like another place. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. That's why the Bible says we have this treasure in earthen vessels. Praise God. How many got touched tonight? How many just sense the fire gone in you right now? Just wave your hand at me. You sense the fire of God in you. Oh, yeah. I, I've had the fire of God burn on me right through the night. I've been lying in bed at night and the fire of God just so strong. It's, it's not about just this meeting tonight. It's not about a nice palatable meeting that everybody can intellectually accept. It's about 
the future. It's about nations. It's about souls. It's about the harvest. You see, I've come too far to back off now. God's burning out, burning out fear. He's burning out timidity. He's burning out compromise. You'll not blush. You'll not be ashamed. You'll not back down. Sister Lydia, I just see something happening when you get home. God's going to have you lay hands on all the women. I see the woman running with the fire of God. I, I just see it. I just see it. I just see it. That's the cry of the African people right there. That's the cry of the African people right there. That's the cry of the African people. It's time to set South Africa free from the bondage of sin and idolatry. It's time. It's time to set them free, to break the chains. The Lord's equipped you. For this hour, he's raised you up.
Jesus.